We've all written our stories now about our visit to the dentist. Could we hear one or two of them, please? It was Tuesday afternoon at three o'clock when I came home from school and my mum was ready to go to the dentist with me. I was going to get fillings. I was shivering and very frightened and I began to shout, I don't want to go, but my mum said you must go. In the surgery there is a black leather chair. The dentist talks to me and then tells me to sit down. When I am sitting down he gets his tools. I'm not sure what they are like. When he probes around inside my mouth I get a tickling feeling. It is quite nice, but I do not like having a filling. Then that drill came into my mouth and drilled a hole in my tooth. Ow, I shouted, it hurt. Then he put the filling in and stumped it down. I went in and nearly fainted. Then a big man said, I don't, don't be scared, so I was. I sat in a chair and a man put a gas mask on me. Then I fell asleep. I went down and down and down, then landed with a bump. My mum said I'm going to the dentist to have out six teeth or more. And when I got there, it did look a scare. I'm not going there anymore. The gas that I had tasted bitter and made funny lines in my eyes. And when I woke up, I was drinking a cup of red water that tasted like lime. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, this young gentleman here, Mr. Arkin. Good morning, Mr. Arkin. Good morning. Will, will you bring me the mirror, please? Thank you. I'm putting the mirror in. What did you want to do? I want this one filled and the rest checked. Fill that place with the backing. I will walk past that one, what you said, one's filling. It is one filling. And the rest are all right. Run that down, please. I'm getting the train now. Now, to put in your mouth to drill a hole in your teeth. Which one did you say, was it? Can you open the bit wide, please? That's it. Does that hurt? My heart was beating. I had a mask put over my nose. I went to sleep, and in a flash it was finished. I was supposed to have one tooth out, but I got three, so I am not going to that dentist anymore. Over two and a half million children's teeth are taken out each year. Yet much is known about a substance which builds healthy teeth, fluoride. It occurs naturally in all water, and when it's present at the right level, people have a dental bonus. One such area is Hartlepool. Mrs. Kathleen Atkinson, school's dental officer. I came to Hartlepool about six years ago. I knew before I came here that there was fluoride in the drinking water, but I wasn't quite sure to what extent or what effect it had had on the children's teeth. Uh, the first school I went to when I came here was a secondary modern school. I was really most amazed. The first thing that I noticed was the small number of extractions that had been done, the small number of extractions that needed to be done. And the next thing I think that I noticed was the colour of the teeth. It looks rather like the top of the milk is compared with the rest of the bottle. And the fact that there is fluoride in the drinking water here means that the teeth are very much stronger and so do not decay so quickly. I worked for nearly 20 years in low fluoride areas and I think that the children who do not have fluoride in their water are subject to very much more dental decay than children in Hartlepool. The children eat far too many sweets, we all eat far too many sweets, far too much sugary stuff. I, I believe that a child is not born with a sweet tooth, it acquires one, simply because the mother feeds it on sweets and sweet biscuits. The sweets, of course, sweets and ice cream are part of a child's life. It must have some, but not too many. But what if fluoride were added to water? After years of research, fluoridation was started in Watford. The former medical officer of health, Dr. William Alcock, was largely responsible for this decision. Well, my interest in fluoridation started when I was Medical Officer of Health for the County of Westmoreland. 
And uh, during the early days of the war, we were a reception area for evacuees from the Tyne site. Now, I well remember the day when uh, my senior dental officer, uh, John Irving, burst into my office one day uh, as if he'd seen some rare phenomenon and related how uh, that day he'd been out to Windermere and had inspected the children and had seen uh, amongst the native children uh, the usual amount of dental decay and then in the North Shields children about the same amount of decay but when he came to the South Shields group of children uh, he saw this remarkable appearance of the teeth beautiful even regular teeth uh, with a most remarkable luster and hardly any decay amongst them from that time onwards uh, I was tremendously interested in this because it seemed that here was a breakthrough uh, in the uh, control of dental decay. In May 1956, uh, fluoridation of the public water supply in Watford commenced. Uh, we have a control town in uh, Sutton, Surrey, and uh, the results of the dental um, examinations which have been carried out in parallel between the two towns have shown conclusively over the years that um, there has been a marked reduction in the incidence of dental decay in the Watford children, uh, especially where those children have been, uh, uh, have been consuming uh, fluoridated water from birth. We have carried out careful inquiries from all the local doctors and dentists for any evidence of harmful effect. Uh, not a single instance of harm has come to light in all the years since fluoridation commenced in 1956. People moving into Hartlepool and Watford notice the difference fluoride makes. One such family is a Hartlepool doctor and his wife who came from Bolton. Well, I have three boys. The two elder ones were born in Lancashire. And the firstborn um, had very poor teeth. He had five or six out by the time he was five due to caries. Despite all we did, we were a bit ashamed of the state of his teeth, in fact. Um, but the younger one, who was born and spent all his life in Hartlepool, has a perfect set at the age of four. Um, not a, a mark of decay on them. And I think the fluoride must in the water must play a great part in this happy state of affairs as far as the youngest one is concerned. Well, we think fluoride must have played a great part in the teeth because nothing else has altered at all. They've had exactly the same diet. Um, in fact, perhaps Andrew has eaten more sweets than Nicholas. He, you know, I'm a little more lax with him, maybe, being the youngest child. He eats quite a few sweets. Mm. Nicholas didn't have many at all. So what else could it be but fluoride, really? What is more, the mothers of Watford can now see for themselves the benefits of fluoridation. The older children who have not enjoyed uh, the benefits of fluoridation all their lives have uh, a certain number of decayed teeth. Whereas the younger children who have drunk it all their life uh, do show the benefits. Uh, and uh, mothers are now coming to me and saying, uh, we can see this. Expert medical opinion in Britain is totally behind the introduction of fluoride. Professor Ronald Emsley, Dean of Dental Studies at Guy's Hospital. Everywhere throughout the world, the medical and dental professions are wholeheartedly supporting uh, water fluoridation. The World Health Organization has come out absolutely clearly and emphatically in favor of fluoridation. The British Medical Association, the British Dental Association, and all the scientific associations uh, with members who are in a position to assess the uh, safety and effectiveness of water fluoridation have come out wholeheartedly in support. Is fluoridation safe? There is no doubt at all about the, the safety of fluoridation. No public health measure has been tested so thoroughly, so extensively in all parts of the world as water fluoridation. 
Britain is in fact rather lagging behind other countries of the world in introduction of fluoridation. Uh, in the United States and Canada, for instance, uh, over half the population drinking uh, pipe water supply are in fact drinking fluoridated water. Uh, in Australia, in New Zealand, in Holland, and the Republic of Ireland, they all are pushing ahead with fluoridation uh, much more rapidly than we are in Britain. Fluoride salts are, of course, present uh, in very small amounts, usually, uh, in all our foods. And in fact, some of them, such as tea and fish, do contain uh, just about the right amount of fluoride as far as uh, the best uh, formation of teeth is concerned. Even rainwater, for instance, in falling through the atmosphere, picks up a very little bit of fluoride. Once, of course, it's soaked through into uh, the earth, and is washed around uh, rocks containing fluoride, then it picks up a bit more. And in some parts of this country, such as Hartley Falls, uh, there the fluoride in the, in the natural drinking water is just the right level for the best formation of teeth. What we're wanting to do with fluoridation, of course, is ensure that the water supply of Hartley Pool uh, can in fact be the water supply of the whole country. If one looks at a population in a, an area where the water has the right amount of fluoride in it and compare that area with uh, another where the fluoride is very low, you'll find that, say, at age 45, there are about twice as uh, many standing teeth in the uh, inhabitants of the fluoride area as compared with the non-fluoride area. Water fluoridation is in the category of a proven public health measure which is effective, is cheap and is entirely safe. As such, I don't see, see that there can be any ethical or moral objections to providing what is the best type of drinking water.